Hello and welcome to Acrylicode. Today we have a new tutorial on this animation. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel to support us in making more tutorials and we recently launched our Patreon with different tiers to get access to all our touch designer files, exclusive online meetups to learn together, access to our online tools and more. I will leave the link in the description box in case you want to have a look. For today's tutorial, we're going to do this animation, which was inspired by a post of Hello Melissa Rodriguez. We're going to recreate this animation on here on Touch Designer. Make sure to check out Hello Melissa Rodriguez on Instagram. So to begin with, we're going to create a circle top and in the parameter window, we're going to set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. At the out of the circle top, we connect a null and we turn on the display flag. Right before the null, we're going to attach a transform and in the parameter window, set the background color to 1 and comb over background color to on. Now for the next step, we're going to create a grid of points. To do this, right click on the connecting line, go to insert operator and we're going to attach another transform. And in the parameter window, we're going to set the x and y scales to 0.05. Then let's go to the tile tab and set the extend parameter to mirror and there we have our grid of points. Let's go back to the circle and decrease the radius to 0.19. Great, now I want to insert a frame. To do that, let's right click over the transform, go to add operator and add a rectangle top. Right click after the rectangle and attach an over top so we can put the rectangle over the transform. So attach the rectangle to the first input and the transform to the second input. In the parameter window of the rectangle, set the fill alpha parameter to 0 and increase the border width to 0.046. Let's also set the border color to white. From here, let's increase the size all the way until it fits as a frame at 1.03. Great, now for the next part, we're going to create a circle in the middle. First, let's copy paste the circle top from the beginning of the network and then we're going to multiply this circle with this grid of points. So right click after the transform 2, go to add operator and insert the multiply where the transform 2 is in the first input and the circle top is on the second input. And there we have the circle. Let's go to the parameter window of the circle and let's increase the size of the radius to 0.3. Now for the next step, we're going to put the grid of points to be over the circle we just created. So right click after the first order, go to insert operator and attach another over top. To the second input, attach the multiply. Now we have a grid and a circle. Right now we cannot see the circle because the tiny circles are completely aligned on top of each other. So now to change this, we're going to connect another transform between the transform and the over. And this one will be responsible for the movement. Now in the parameter window, if we change the value of the translate, we cause this movement. But what we want to do is figure out the value of the translate so that the tiny circles move away and then go back to a line again. To do this, we have to make some simple calculations. First, if you remember before, we set the scale of this transform to 0.05. This means that the distance from one dot to its neighbor dot is going to be 0.1. So we start here, we go to the middle, which is 0.05, and then to 0.1, which is the next dot. And now what we want is we want every two dots to change the position. Meaning if we start with this dot, it will have to move 0 0.1, 0 0.2. This means that if we go to transform 3 and move the whole thing to the right, we will notice that the points on this part will stay in the exact same positions that the previous points were. So we're going to leave this at 0 0.02. And next, let's go to the tile tab and set the extend parameter to mirror. So we know now that if we increase the translate x parameter in increments of 0.02, the circles align. Any value in between, they don't align anymore. So now that we have that, we're going to automatize this movement. To do this, we're going to work with chops. Let's press tab and add a bit chop, which gives us values from 0 to 1, and we're going to use these values as indexes for a lookup we're going to attach right after it. And to the second input of the lookup, we're going to attach a pattern chop. In the parameter window of the pattern, set the pattern parameter to ramp. 
Now, if we attach a null to the lookup, we also see here the values going from 0 to 1. And we established before that we want the values to go until 0.02. Now, to get this, we could either attach a math and use it to change the value, or we could go to the amplitude parameter of the pattern and set its value to 0.2. And we see now how the pattern changes to values going until 0.2. Let's set the offset to 0.001, so it goes slightly above 0.02. Now we're going to use this amplitude to set off a trigger every time the null reaches 0.2. So let's attach a trigger chop after the null, and in the parameter window set the trigger threshold to 0.2. I am not seeing the trigger here yet, and to fix this I'll go back to the parameter window of the pattern and increase the offset to 0.01. And there we have the trigger. We're going to see what this trigger will do in a minute. First, let's see what we have until this null. If I drag it, hold, go to the parameter window of the transform and drop it onto the scale parameter, then we will see that this will cause this linear movement. This movement also has a speed and this speed we can control by changing the value of the period of the beat chop. So now we're going to use the trigger to change the direction of this movement. If we go to the parameter window of the transform, go to scale, and in here multiply the first expression with minus 1, we see the direction of the movement will change. And the same will happen if I multiply this second expression. Let's say that we want our animation to start with this movement and then we want it to change to this direction. Then what we have to do is we start with positive, positive, then we go negative, positive, then negative, negative, positive, negative, and then we start back from the beginning. Let's pin this order down with a constant chop. In here, let's set the parameters. The first one, let's make it for sine of x, which will be 1 at the beginning. And the second one will be sine y and will also be 1. Then let's create four copies of the constant chop. The first one is already set positive, positive. The second constant chop will be negative, positive. So let's set the sine x parameter to minus 1. For the third one, we want negative, negative. So let's multiply both parameters in the constant chop with minus 1. For the last constant, we then have positive, negative. Now let's press tab and we're going to add a switch to change between these four stages. So let's connect all constant chops with a switch and attach a null right at the end of this network. So now this null holds the sign changes. So now what we want is that every time this gets triggered, the index is going to change. So every time the value goes to 0.2, then the circles are going to be aligned and it will cause this movement to change direction. Next, let's go to the parameter window of the trigger, go to attack, set both the attack length and the peak length to zero. Then go to the sustain tab, set the decay length to zero, the sustain level to one and the release length to zero. Now what we have here at the trigger is just a very dry trigger that only goes from zero to one. We're going to right click after the trigger and add a count chop. On the parameter window we go to count and we're going to set the limit to loop min max and we'll set the maximum to go to 3 since we have 4 states. So now the count will loop from 0 until 3. Let's attach a null after the count, let's drag and drop it onto the index parameter of the switch and select chop reference. So now in the null at the end of the network we can see the signs changing. So what we need to do is multiply these values from here with the signs and assign it to each state. So I will move this network a bit to the left so that later I can connect the nodes. Then I will press tab and add a math chop. Let's connect both of the signs and the null to its input. Right after the math, I will attach a null. In the parameter window of the math, let's set the combined chop parameter to multiply. So in here, it's combining the signs according to the movement. Now all we do is assign the values to the transform. So first, I drag the sign x and drop it onto the translate x parameter of the transform, and sign y to the translate y parameter. So there we have the movement changing directions. We can tweak this speed here for the animation to go faster by decreasing the period parameter of the beat chop. 
From here you can also go to the pattern and change the length or number of cycles. Or you can change the shapes entirely by switching on the polygon parameter of the circle or increasing the number of sides. So it's up to you, be creative and I would love to see what you come up with. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something new with this tutorial. If you have questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments and I will see you next Friday with another video. Bye!